Hello, tonight we have uh, author and I would say the king of the spooky, <laughs> Paul Gambino. So introduce yourself, say hi. Hi, Anne, uh, and hi to everybody out there. I want to thank you, Ann, for uh, bringing me on. Uh, I don't know if I'm the king of spooky. I, I surround myself. I surround Listen. myself with a lot of spook. I surround myself with a lot of spook. Yeah, I I saw your Instagram. I followed it. I've I've looked up some of your books on Amazon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're close to the king of spooky. <laughs> you so. should see my friends then, if you want to meet real spooky. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So we're here talking about tonight. First and foremost, your new book, "The Art of Gothic Living." Um, I read this. And uh, yeah, I'm impressed. Very impressed. Oh, um, some of the strangest and amazing decor. <laughs> so um, what what inspired you to create the book? And are those places that you decorated, are they friends of yours, per personal contacts? How does that work? Right. Well, actually, um, all the books I do, um, it's that these are where people live. That that's the most important thing for me. It's not that we visit museums or places that it's you know uh, only at certain times of the year their homes look like this or their collections are out of a, out of a, a museum. These are all personal collections, and all these homes. I didn't decorate these homes by no means. These are all pre-existing, and this is the way these people live. Um, wow. You know, twenty four seven, um, and. <clears throat> Uh, it came about kind of, I, the book came about and I met all these people because of the previous books and the books mm -hmm. concentrated on people's collections and through pe meeting people with these collections and then more specifically skulls. Um, it came about that to do a book of not to zero in on the specific items of their house, but more so the decor and how these items are displayed throughout the mm. home uh so that's really how this book is evolutionary compared to the earlier mm. books because instead of just concentrating on the specific pieces which we do try to highlight in the books because the history of the pieces and why these pieces are in their their homes um is equally as important to the piece itself so um yeah these people the 15 homes that are in this book and i tried to make it as um, eclectic as possible, still mm -hmm. keeping under the umbrella of it being Gothic. Now, Gothic, I should really preface it by saying it's modern Gothic. And that's like, right. eight, you know, 17, late 1700s, 18, mm -hmm. uh, 1800s into the early 1900s, because Gothic can go as far back as like, you know, wooden tables and, you know, goblets and, you know, you right. know, so this right. is truly modern Gothic. And it's a twist on it. I think uh, this one that I put on the screen is my favorite. I just, yeah, that's Ryan Matthew Cohen's home. Uh, mm -hmm. Ryan is a uh, one of the. If you remember that show Oddities, yes. uh, Ryan was was on, on Oddities, and Evan okay. uh, Michelson, who was also on Oddities, is in the book. Um, mm. So that's yeah. you know. So some of the people I didn't know, and you know how it happens. Your know, word gets out. Oh, you're doing a book, or you're doing a project, and then people kind of come. Now the interesting thing, and some of the reasons why some of these homes have never been seen. Um, by, except by um, these people's personal mm -hmm. friends. Um, so that was kind of a coup. And it was, I'm very grateful that those people uh, actually let us go in there and, and photograph their homes. They were somewhat reluctant at the beginning. And you know what happens in mm -hmm. all my books is that people don't want to be painted as, oh, they're a bunch of weirdos or mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And stuff like that. And obviously, I don't think they are. And I, and I no. don't. don't try to uh, portray it as, as such. And that's why they get to, you know, narrate us through the book, narrate us through their home. And um, you get to really understand why mm. these pieces are there and, and why the home is like that. Um, I, I don't know, very impressive. Um, like I said, my favorite one here, the some of the pieces in the background of the corners, the, yeah. the one that looks like a, I don't know. If it's the one on the camera right, I guess would be, that comes out of a wax, medical museum wow. in Germany. That's part of a huge collection that Ryan mm -hmm. acquired. Um, some of the collection is actually the decor in a really nice bar restaurant. Mm -hmm. If you ever come to New York called House of Wax. And oh, um, I've been there. 
Oh, you've been to House of Wax? Yes, yes. Spent yes. some significant time in New York. So okay, yeah. so that yeah, that's where a lot of those pieces mm -hmm. actually came from. And Ryan did those pieces. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, and yeah. that that's one of the wow. pieces he kept for himself. You're talking about the anatomical piece, I assume, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which is larger than life. So when you mm -hmm. stand next to it, it's gigantic. Right. Yeah, this is Andrew's home. He's out of Aus um, Australia. Uh, and he's a set decorator, hence oh, wow. uh, that's actually an old, it, it, his his space is railroad. So mm -hmm. what he tried to do, or what he accomplished in doing is he broke it up through panels. But I assume, I've never been there, but I assume you can see the whole length of his, his space. Right. The beginning to end. And it's very long. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh yeah, he, the hanging he, the hanging lantern type things. I'm not sure what those are called, but um, almost just give it a different, just something to it. Yeah, he he mentions that in the book too. How he's always on in search of those like Indonesian or they, yes, you know, yeah. uh, hanging lanterns, and mm -hmm. he does have. I some definitely, one. I definitely wouldn't call these things weird. I would say eclectic and uh, unique. You know, I mean, who does that kind of stuff? It's very unique. So. Yeah. And when you know why they do it, it's a different story. You know mm -hmm. what I mean, too? You know, and, you know, you and I may be somewhat jaded because, you know, you, you're, you know, you're familiar with the stuff and you, you're taking it back when people think like, oh, my God, this is crazy. But I guess mm -hmm. it's really, you know, uh, just us being very familiar with it that we we assume that everyone's like, oh, this is, you know, just a different style of decor. Right. You yeah, know? no, I, I I agree. There's there's people with very closed minds in this world. I encounter yeah. them daily. So um they yeah. there are people that would uh label them weird. But yeah, I don't know. Um I think this is a fun, fun book. I read through it. I, I just loved it. Um oh, so something good. very uh different like to really open your eyes to other way of living like these literally these people that's their couches that's their living room that's their study or their their office so it's it's fantastic to see something like that all put together you know in a book also it's funny how you say like these are these couches these are because mm -hmm. i specifically um asked all the photographers dan howe was one of the main photographers but there were some you know other fantastic photographers who contributed to the book um and they're listed in the book um, that I asked them if, if, if when possible to sit in, like ask the, if I wasn't there to ask the homeowner, uh, where do you sit when you're in this room? Mm -hmm. So shoot from that perspective, you know, because I assume that that's how they set up that room, that when they're sitting here like this, this is what they, they want to see, or, right. you know what I mean? So that, that yeah, so your point's well taken of like this is their couch, this is their, you know, their mm. table. This it's is their a total table. way of life, not just yeah. um, a picture or, you know, a seasonal thing. It's a, literally a way of life. Yeah, um, collectors and their their all their reasonings behind it, you know, passions for it. So I think this is going to do well, I, and I hope that everybody listening and watching goes out and gets it. I think Amazon, right? Yeah, it's on Amazon. It released, and on, then your publisher's website too. I saw so. Yeah, Union Square. It's yeah. on there. It's on. It's on a lot of bookseller sites. Mm -hmm. I mean, unfortunately, I mean it's in bookstores, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. stores are few and far between. Yeah, the these so days. That, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, going a little backwards, what mm -hmm. brought you into this world? of you know the gothic and the different the strange um on your instagram you have something called morbid auctions so talk about right that morbid auctions bit. is not is not i don't want to talk only reason i don't want to talk about morbid auctions because it's on okay. hiatus right now but okay. um the um yeah the way i got into it was being a collector you know you know obviously a collector of the macabre my, my, the thing i you, you know how it is when you collect um you collect very broadly and then your house or your space mm -hmm. or whatever because of, so you have to start to narrow it down you know so right, right presently or for the last you know decade my thing my personal collections revolve around victorian morning photos uh post usually post-mortem photos of by you know in the victorian era but i i threw all of my friends or a lot of my collector friends it became a natural okay you know what um 
let's do a book on these people's collections. And when I pitched the book, I specifically, that's more of a curiosity. First book, I said, look, I, I this definitely is not going to be museums. It's not the whole premise. The whole, for lack of a better term, hook is that this is these mm. people's personal collections. You know, mm -hmm. they it's in their home and, and they and they live with these collections every day. But the book zeroed in on the collection, on the pieces, not as they were displayed throughout the house, the home. And right. from that came another, the publisher got back to me and said, oh, you know, that book did very well. Would you want to do a book on skulls, mm, mm -hmm. on human skulls? So collectors of human skulls. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that, that would be fine. But I'm, and I know people, and there are people in the book in skulls, uh, portraits of the dead, um, mm. that have hundreds of skulls. And then I was like, you know what, but it's not just, I, I also want to, I also want to have people in the book that have one skull because to me, that's, it's all, it's just actually, uh, it's equally as interesting why someone would have one human skull in their house, you know, what, what possessed them mm -hmm. to have one human skull as opposed to the person that has a hundred who both equally, interesting, I, but you might I, understand. Yeah. I personally wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter if they had one or five. I want to know them. <laughs> I want to know why you have a human skull. I want right. to hear the story. I want to know all about it. I want to be your friend. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, and also another thing um, about skulls and, and the number of skulls, and I learned this in Morbid Curiosities, and you'll notice in, in every book that I do, uh, including killer collections, is that I try to, and it's not even like I try to, at the beginning, I thought I had to try to, but it became natural mm -hmm. that there's a there's a balance, a pretty equal distribution of men and women, because people think, oh, this must be a male dominated, you know, uh, you know, feel uh, collecting style. And it's not mm -hmm. one interesting thing about it, though. And that does segue into into um, the art of Gothic living is that um, women collect not to be sexist, to make a sexist comment. Women seem to collect, uh, and I've been told this is this actually was told to me by Evan, and and she said, is that men seem to want to collect all the pieces within their collection. Like if they want this, they want mm -hmm. as many of this as they can get. Right. Whereas the, the a woman will say, you know what, I'm really searching for this one specific piece because I feel this really sums up this part of the collection. You know what I mean? And right. that no, you I agree that, with you. Yeah, so I'm that you agree. can also see in in the art of Gothic living, where I think there's a good balance of of, mm -hmm. you know, men and women and approaches to, um, there's a, there's a home in Philly, uh, actually not in Philly, but it's in Pennsylvania that, um, is very true to, of uh, Victorian and it's very sparse. Um, I, uh, the, the, the they, they refer to it as, uh, as Modeum Hall. I, um, that's, um, Darcy and Leaf. Mm -hmm. homework now if you looked at their home it isn't as overwhelming as some of the other homes but it is very true to victorian and then you'll go to homes like ron you know like ryan's or you know right. anastasia's or vasilios's and their well vasilios is that his book his his home is very very brooding very dark yeah. you know what i mean it, yeah, it has okay. more of what you would assume uh, and his even dates further back in terms of how he decided to, you know, and I shouldn't say decided Oops. to. Yeah. It's just a natural progression. You know, I assume, you know, you, it's when I assume when you decorate your home, no matter what style it's in, you step back at one point and you're not even aware of why it just seems mm. natural at that point. You know what I mean? Like this. Is it just took its own form. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Right. It, sometimes it's... once your creativity starts going, it just, you just can't stop. Right. And then pretty soon you step back like, wow, how did I do? How did I get here? Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. That, that's exactly, that's exactly mm. true. It, it's just a matter of comfort too. And I think that's what, that's where there could be somewhat of a psychological issue. Um, believe me, I'm no, I can only speak to myself. Uh, for myself in terms of, I know that I have surrounded myself with death related objects, not mm -hmm. murderous objects, but things of symbolic mm -hmm. because of a fear of it. 
So it's a way to kind of feel like you can kind of have some kind of control over it. You Absolutely. Know, that, you it's know? a way to control that fear and, and shove it away. Like you're right. in power of it. You're, you've taken exactly. back the power. So yeah. You're taking back the power. Right. So mm -hmm. maybe, you know, um, that, that could be some of, you know, the motivation, but I, I, I don't want to speak for any, uh, any, any, uh, homeowner that's in the, in that hasn't, described why they've done it i mean ryan gives a great quote where mm -hmm. um asked if his home was and i ask everyone if their home was haunted you know what they would do and ryan mm -hmm. says if, if my home was haunted i would charge people admission right you know and, what i mean yeah. you know so mm -hmm. and and um i was once interviewed by um somebody from national geographic and they made a, a really interesting point to me that i didn't realize they said you know a lot of the books you do, there seems to be this that constant battle between science and religion of the people mm. that are in the book. And it really is true when you look back at it, mm. you know, it's like there's a lot of religious items and iconography and, and then there's all this whole science thing, you know, like old medical and actual medical pieces and stuff. So it's this it's this juxtaposition and this battle, right. inner battle of what to believe, you know. Right. So, you know, and I wasn't even aware of it, you know, when thinking of it, and I guess. I think that happens when you come across these types of different um, pieces, whether it's paintings or, um, you know, skulls or whatever, something mm -hmm. representing death. You wonder, like, what, what do I believe in? You know, the science yeah. or the religion? And I think with my show, the podcast itself, I don't touch religion for that reason. Sure. Um, I think there's too much, uh, pe too many people, I think, would come for me on that. <laughs> so yeah, everybody has their own belief. And, and discussing religion is like, who's, whose point is more valid than the other person? So why, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're going to get into a debate over it. Right. I think it's silly. It's just. I agreed. You know, everyone believes their their method of belief, their system of belief, is the correct one. All right. Yours well, is not. not theirs is or whatever. So. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, that's the same thing with these people's homes. You know, it, mm. they feel comfortable around in this environment, and like you're saying, you don't. You know, you're fascinated by it. You might think it. You know, mm. it may be for you, it may not be for you, or maybe not be for other people, but they've taken it to a level where it, even if you don't, even if you would not feel comfortable with it, you have to appreciate mm -hmm. the curation that went into their home. And in right. a lot of cases, it's the, you know, the reconstruction of these, of these mm -hmm. pieces, you know. I, I, I believe, I guess it was to me, my, my thoughts after looking at the book and reading it, um, it's a sign of like intelligence. I mean, each piece carries so much historical value. Like what's the history behind if you put all the pieces together in one room, you quite possibly have millions of years of history, you know, Literally, all of that yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. So almost a sign of intelligence when people are more eclectic like that in their homes. So. And they and you and that's the that's what makes making doing these books um, relatively easy mm -hmm. is that you these homeowners these collectors they want to speak about the pieces mm -hmm. you know what I mean they, you know they love to to share the information the background story on them because um, you know that's the reason why they brought them in in their house they're not just you know it's it it it's totally not it's not for shock value the the, pe the right. people i've always see, sought out in any of my books it's they, they don't collect because they they want to shock you or they want to impress you with well, isn't this the weirdest the scariest thing you've ever seen um some of the pieces might be and i and i even mm -hmm. ask people you know are there certain pieces you won't put in your home or there you know are there certain things and people do have limitations um they might not be why you think the limitations are but you know, everyone has their own personal reason about how far they'll they'll go. Right. And, and a lot of people that have homes like these, um, they'll be criticized and say, you know, you have a lot of pieces in your home that you that you think should be in a in, that that should be in a museum. And a lot of their responses are, um, well, if you knew the amount of inventory was actually in a museum that's on display. There's probably more people that see my stuff per thing than, than in museums. I mean, museums have I huge cachets and stuff. 
that mm-hmm. don't ever see the light of day. Now they mm-hmm. will say, look, if they think that it has, pe- pe- these people in these homes have told me if they've ever come across a piece that they think has huge historical value, they will pass on it. You know right. what I mean? And think that, okay, no, this this serves to be better. Because you got to right. remember, these people have been, some of these people have been in the in the world for a long time and they get approached with some very interesting pieces, you know, that they'll, you know, that, you know, that they all say, no, I, you know, this is probably best suited for somewhere else and, and, and not for me. And I'm, I'm talking right. legally approached, you know, not like black market thing, you know, just right, like, yeah. but they're like, you know, um, you know, my home, it just doesn't fit my home or it maybe it needs to be somewhere else, you know? Well, like you were saying, uh, more possibly people more view it in their home versus a museum. And I agree with that. And nevertheless, I think that if a piece is, it's historical and it's in their home, it very well may be loved significantly more than sitting in a museum shelf and passed by, by hundreds of people. So it might, it might serve someone better, you know? Absolutely. And a lot of people say that Uh, a lot of homeowners, I mean, they, they feel homeowners and I shouldn't say feel they do. I mean, Mm. it's up to opinion that they're, what they're doing is, is they're, um, they're curating and, and protecting these pieces and preserving these pieces. You know what I mean? They're, they're on display, but they're, they're, these people relish these pieces. They, you know, they really love them. You know what I mean? And, um, and so, yes, to your point, yeah, there's, there's more respect for those pieces that are in these homes than, and, and for the people that come to visit these homes mm-hmm. and look at homes, then sometimes you're saying, you're right, we just keep walking past, always in the Right, I mean, people may not even understand what they're seeing in a museum. They just go to the, the most traveled or tourist type spaces yeah. in the museum. So yeah, definitely more love for a, a piece in, a, in an authentic environment. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, your your Instagram is a lot of fun to go through. I think a lot of people should jump on that and <laughs> go take a look at some of your what you've got posted. Um, the pieces that are like skulls and different things. Um, do you yourself own anything that's creepy or strange that you possess in your own home? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's funny how you want like right now. I mean, like the other collectors will scoff at it, but because they'll have tons and tons. But, you know, right now I have about eight skulls. I do have a full skeleton that I'm rearticulating down in the basement. A lot of post-mortem photographs, basically of uh, Victorian era children. Um, a lot of religious, you know, a lot of religious items. Uh, I have a full a full size St. Sebastian and a full size Virgin Mary. Wow. You know, the St. Sebastian has an interesting backstory. It was uh, came out of Little Italy, and it was um, wow. actually the saint that was carried through the streets that they would, during the, the festival of St. Sebastian, mm-hmm. they would put it on it. Um, but my, my, my home and my pails in uh, comparison to well, a, lot yeah. of the, a lot of the homes, I mean, they're just unbelievable. And, you know, it's the book is um the book is you know aspiration and um you know you know it's things to aspire to and it's also ways of you can do it yourself too you know i mean right. it, it's there's you know you don't everyone's home doesn't have to look as you know top to bottom as these right you know uh but, are uh, any of these individuals that are featured in your book are they skilled in interior design yeah. or is it well, just their own well, the, actually, it's funny. The the photo you're showing here, mm-hmm. that um, that's Anastasia and Scott mm-hmm. in stock. They um, they like if you in that shot you you have right up there. There's that, uh, and I should really know, but you see the the ceiling piece mm-hmm. where the chandelier that they re, that that's all been rebuilt, you wow. know, re, replastered. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, they he had to remake all the molds and stuff right. like that, and that's done throughout the house. There's all this plastic, insane plaster work and it's featured wow. in the book some of it, and um he cre- recreated a bathroom on his first mm. floor out of old uh organ pieces so, oh my goodness uh, the toilet and stuff are, are from an old very old mm-hmm. no they're they're skilled at interior design or is it just like personal? okay that, yeah that that would be physical tactile stuff but like um uh 
Andrew, like I say, he he's a set, you know, that's his, that's his thing. Oh, okay. Um, oh. But I would say, and they all have a, a, a you know, a tendency or a, an, in, in a talent to set design or design or be interior decorators. But none of them that I know of are actually, that is their profession. Um, like Adam, Adam is a Broadway actor, performer, singer. He's actually mm -hmm. Santa. He was actually Santa Claus this year on a bro uh, at, wow. Radio, at Radio City, which is a real honor. That mm -hmm. I think only been yeah. Three of uh, you know Ryan Regina there. The, you know the top two definitely uh, of the whole oddities community. Uh, they have a lot of projects always going. Andrew is the set designer. You know, mm -hmm. Anastasia and Scott have. Uh, have an oddity, an amazing oddity. So Giano Del Buffalo, he's an interesting character. He, I shouldn't say character, an interesting man. He, um, him and his friends bought that castle in mm. Italy, and um, wow, they divided up that castle. And uh, <laughs> he's some somewhat of a celebrity, TV celebrity in in Italy. Uh, he goes around, and um, they look, they have like an oddities type show. Mm -hmm. uh, it's funny, Giano told me, Giano, he's like. He's a very nice guy and very low key and very modest, but he's actually um, a countess, a count. Oh, wow. You know, That's you know, And he okay. said, you know, it really doesn't have much weight, but I mean, he, that came out very late and he, you know, he, he's very modest about it. Look, it doesn't really mean anything too much, but I am technically a count. Wow. You know, so, and he lives in a, in a true castle. Mm -hmm. you know, um, wow. And, and Bridget lives in a church, you know, mm -hmm. so. Uh, you know the homes themselves and um allison uh and, and david and mckinley i mean their home i should know it but i think their home is like i, I was writing the book but i think it's like 400 years old you know it's wow. incredibly old um, imagine what yeah yeah 1559 mm. 1559 mm. So that, that that's was, crazy. That's crazy, right? Yeah, it's to boring. think of what those walls have huh. seen or encountered, or absolutely what pieces of the walls. I wouldn't imagine they're the original, but maybe. So, well, some of the walls, um, yeah. I mean, some of the foundational walls, mm -hmm. and you know, and it's true. And you, I, I believe, I, I agree with you on that. Like, you know, what has gone, what what evolu the evolution through the world is mm -hmm. those walls, for lack of a better term, seen and the people that have come in, in and out of that home. You know, mm. it's like it's like you can tell uh, you can tell the politics of the world through the art of that period. You know what I mean? Or the medical, right. you know, so these homes are in a cops, you know, encapsulate all this stuff. I, I, I don't want you know, I, I'm very enthusiastic about it. And I, you know, I I love it. And um, and I hope the book really does show that the passion that and i think that the book does show the passion that these people have for it and mm -hmm. how it's just they these people love their homes as much as hopefully most people love their home right and have taken it if you could take it to the next degree to whatever your design is or whatever your style it's of almost is. like a pride in their home you know they they yeah, take so much pride in and not only just their home their own personal style and you know feelings about it um to create your space to make you to i don't know how to say this um your personality came to life in one room yeah. is kind of how i felt when i was looking through the pages like literally each person's or each couple whatever their personality came to life in the creation of the the decor in the room so very interesting absolutely yeah i mean yeah, you, you when you walk into any one of these people's homes, you can make an assumption, you know, and um, based on where you're coming from. But there's no way you could walk into any one of these homes and and not be um, captivated. You might not love it. You might not, but you would definitely. You know, if you didn't love it, it would be like a train wreck. You just can't stop <laughs> looking. Um, if you love it, you're just going to be enchanted by it. So yeah. enchanted um, all, nice all the pieces come together. And I think for me, like people that are like me, 
I would probably spend an hour or more in each room just oh, taking absolutely. it all in, staring at the different pieces, trying to understand more about them. So, yeah. Um, and you know what? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. No, go ahead. I was going to say, when you say spending time like an hour in each room, that was really important to me, too, in terms of the photography of in the book. I wanted it to be because these homes are set up like that, that you sit there and you look and you think you've seen everything, even if you're in one spot. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, wait, I didn't see that. You know what I mean? Things are yeah, something place. else pops out at you. Yeah. Exactly. You know, or is lit in a certain way or, or a certain time of the day, the light strikes this way and all of a sudden mm -hmm. something else now becomes into, you know, it, it, you know, into focus. So, yeah, it, it is um, like you say, you could spend tremendous amounts of time and, and continue to and, and be surprised there are, you know, it, right. in terms of it's doesn't sometimes it's not always for lack of a better term ghoulish. There is very sweet things, just, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You know, right. that, that come through. Um, maybe yeah. display. I don't know that any of it's really ghoulish. I think that I mean, there's the the thought it could be, but it's more just historical. Just a little bit of odd history. That's all dark history. You're Not necessarily right. scary, but could be, I suppose. But depends on how you look at it. Well, it's like, you know, you, that's very, you know, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's history. And it, it just because it may not be the history that you're used to or, mm. uh, or want to delve deeper into, it, it does have historical value. And, mm. you know, uh, and my. And, personal opinion i i believe all history is dark no matter how you look at it if you just really read the historical just stories of the wars the different things you know it's there's it's it's horrifying <laughs> our history is very horrifying you know, there isn't any piece that's like happy or fun <laughs> it's uh, oh, yeah you're absolutely right and, it, and i've just I, I it's funny you bring that up because literally today i was thinking because of the state, and I'm not going to get into politics, but right. because of the yeah. state of the world right now, mm -hmm. and there are groups of people that are trying to bring peace, mm -hmm. not to be cynical, mm -hmm. but I bet you there's a dark side to that whole aspect. Of oh, I'm people. sure. Yeah. You know, it's just like, so you really, you know, once again, this does sound very jaded, but it seems like everything if you want to look at it as tainted can be considered potentially tainted or, or have a dark mm. side to it. You know what I mean? And, but I don't want to, I don't want to spin the at all because when you, you meet these people, they're, you know, they're very happy people. They're very, right, yeah. people. They're very you know, you know, families, mm. you know, some of them have big families. They love their family. They love their spouse. They love their dogs. They love, you know what I mean? It's mm. just, you know, it's really, a. uh, uh yeah, phenomenal though to have all of these um, homes in one book. Like, uh, I yeah, would imagine yeah. that maybe you could do another part two someday in the future. I mean, they're you know how it is now. Everyone's other. like, oh, you, these people mm -hmm. reach out to them, like, oh, you have to see my home, you know, and then right. they, they send That's, you images of their home, yeah. and you're like, where were you, you know, nine months <laughs> right. ago? You know what I mean? You know, so sometimes it's how it happens, though. Yeah, you know, and and it, it's. It's all good, and and it, you know, it it also, you know, it mm. um not not that there is any great um, humanitarian aspect to it, but it also makes people feel like, oh yeah, you know, I'm glad there are other people that have the same interests mm. as I do, and 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 respected for what they have, and not, you know, and not ridiculed or you know, right, you know, fully for it. Do you collect? Yeah. I'm sorry. Do you collect? Do I collect? Um, sometimes, not often. Um, kind of a minimalist, but I really, that's have some stuff. Yeah, very minimalist. I uh, don't like a lot of clutter, but wow, um, I do have like um, a little bit of an obsession with um, vintage tarot cards. Oh, really? Um, I love collecting them. I have like a hundred decks of them, f ranging back from the 1500s. Um, oh my! All gosh, the way really? to, I have 
all the way to Alistair Crowley's deck that he created. Really, so, really, yeah, wow. it's really cool, interesting. Um, and they're also very small that I can yeah. <laughs> store somewhere that I don't have to worry about them cluttering up everything. But yeah, that is something I've been doing since I was, I think, nineteen. So strange, is, but... <laughs> have you seen like those very early tarot decks? Is there like mm -hmm. an evolution of? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, some of them were larger um, and I would say very dark, like the depictions, the illustrations on them were very dark, you know, whereas now you have decks with, um, I saw on Amazon the other day, the garbage pail kid tarot oh, deck. Yeah, right. I mean, so now you have stuff like that coming around right. and. Um, but yeah, the size, the the texture, the 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 way you could lay them out has definitely evolved since the 1500s, and I think that's the earliest that I've seen tarot decks. Are so, the cards mm -hmm. not talking about the garbage pail ones and stuff? But are the cards, <laughs> yeah. are, are the are the cards the same? First of all, how many how many cards are there? Uh, okay. Depends on each deck. Okay. Generally, I think it's a 78 card deck. Most wow. most of them, but. Um, some of them are less lesser, you know. And 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 there are which you don't have to name them all, but like what I guess, what are like five of that are from the, you know, hmm. five hundred years old that those know images their stay. names. No, um, I, mean, I guess the times, death card would always yeah. have been there, right? Right. Yeah. Um. I think my all-time favorite is the the most popular deck, which is the Rider White Tarot. It's a lot of historical value and um, it makes sense to me when I play around with it. Um. The other decks, when you look, they some of them don't even come with the descriptions of the cards because they're really? so old. Yeah. Um. So you kind of have to figure out what what does it mean, you know, based on the illustration of it. But definitely the, the changes in um, the evolution of the sizes and uh, I have a deck that was like, it belonged to a gypsy years and years and years ago. And they, in the little trailers, they would tell fortunes yeah. with the cards and they were very large, like not quite wow. eight by 10 sheets of paper, but a little larger than a five by seven photo. So that is big. very interesting. Then going fast forward, the 70s deck of Aleister Crowley, you know, Satanist, um, very unusual and strange. And the meanings of the cards, um, they take me a minute to scratch my head and read it twice. Like, what? <laughs> so yeah. who knows what we, what was going on in his head back then? But yeah. I'll keep an eye yeah. out. Yeah. For, and I'll send you. Oh, if I ever see you kind of. Yeah, if I ever yeah. come across people that have them that you might be interested in. Yeah, let me know. I'd yeah. love to get my hands on more. Like yeah, I, said, yeah. You know, I have about a hundred decks and uh yeah, lots of fun. Yeah, that's and what yeah. do you think of those tarot movies? Oh, we watched that recently. <laughs> <laughs> it was all right. I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> not, not like, you know, the best thing in the world, but a good storyline. So yeah. we have a um uh, James Freeman's a big uh Ouija board collector talking oh. as well. It's same with uh, Brandon Hodge, who both of those both of those people are in the book um, have wow. very extensive. You should look up um, you should look up Brandon Hodge and and James Freeman. Brandon Hodge, mysterious planchette. His um, mm -hmm. you know he he, he might be a, a good contact for you also um, because mm -hmm. he concentrates on mostly planchettes, believe it or not, and okay, and the boards. Yeah. But he has a lot of context in that world and he might be able to help you in terms of oops, yeah, that'd down be some fun. interesting decks. Yeah. Ouija boards, though that would be interesting. Like the uh, very vintage ones and oh, different ones. But wow. I mean they, they look very different than the uh, the one that what is who was the toy maker that made it? Was it Milton Bradley or yeah, Milton Bradley took it over? Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. very yeah. very different than that tarot or that Ouija board that's been seen, yeah. seen since the eighties, seventies, eighties. Um, I've seen lots of those online that were made of wood or yeah. various materials. Interesting. Yeah, if you look at James Freeman's chapter, he has uh, he has some boards up and some very old ones in there. Hmm. They're you know, oh, very again, expensive yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he actually has one in uh, his his portrait. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I did see that. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. That's a good one. Yeah, he's really wow. uh, a big and, and Brandon Hodge. They're both two of the big. There's other. There's other people. Mm -hmm. It's a very popular. 
really great to understand and see what like how do I put this? You see the collections that they collect, but also kind of a little bit of a backstory as to why they might collect it, and that's kind of fun. Uh, otherwise, it's just a bunch of pic. You know, it's just you know mm -hmm. the pictures are you know wonderful, and but to know the backstory on the pictures, like um, there are certain things where <clears throat> until you read the caption, I'm a big caption guy. I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. You know, until you read the caption, you're not. You're like, well, why is this even here? Or like, uh, right? What is this? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, a photo in, in one of my books of a one of those little things where you would go like this and the person would spin around, you know? Oh, okay. And um, it's made of wood and it's probably from the 20s. Mm. And it's in the book and you're like, wow, why is why is this in the book? And there's a little note next to it, a little handwritten note next to it wow. in, the photo, in the photograph. And when you read the note and the caption mm. says, <clears throat> I forget the gentleman's name, but it's to the fun. This is the last toy your mother played with before she died. So now all of a sudden this toy becomes so wow. much different mm -hmm. you know what i mean so um mm -hmm. you know yeah and, and that's the way so many of the items in these people's homes are there's so much backstory i mean we did touch upon that and mm -hmm. and then there's just the the uh, you know the uh, aesthetic element of just beauty if you're not so deep into into why but just the aesthetic of right the of the piece that's there too you know um mm -hmm. It's so I have a let's see, I have a photo of several of your this book and several others, and I oh, wanted to kind of put that up there. Um, so anybody watching or listening, they can get these various different places you can purchase books. Um, obviously, today we're talking about the art of gothic living, oh. dark decor, um, but morbid curiosities. I've kind of played around and looked at some of these books, and I, I've just fascinated by all of them. Um, do you have any, did you have any inspiration for any of these? Like, for example, the dark art artifacts from true crime. That's yeah, that, that was the most, yeah, that was the, that book was, um, was the most unique book in terms of the collectors. Um, mm -hmm. They, people that collect um, true crime are definitely a, somewhat of a different style of collector than the morbid curiosity skulls and the art of gothic living um they're very steeped in crime um not mm -hmm. as criminals you know obviously but more so um just i mean uh, the true crime is uh, you know a phenomenon right yeah people, really so, these days you know. crazy um, but um <laughs> those collectors and there was two basic collectors there was collectors who wanted to have nothing didn't want to know anything or have any contact with um and i'm told the, the book isn't just serial killers but they're right. obviously that's the uh, the holy grails you know mm. you know so and um some some collectors wanted to have nothing to do with those people and then there were some collectors that would not collect from those people unless they got to go and meet those people and they would make wow. pilgrimages to those prisons and develop relationships with them wow. and then get pieces That's... from them, you know, including people, Gacy, mm -hmm. Manson, you know, um, that's a fascinating book. And that yeah. book, that book, um, is the epitome of what you say that it, when you made reference to, uh, dark history and they, those collectors vehemently defend themselves and say, look, this is history. It may not be history that you want to think about, you know, but, it, it, but it's it, and it is history and they also uh, a common theme is they'll say i know more about the victims of these people than you do you know the killer mm -hmm. you know what i mean I, right. I you know what i mean i actually try to in some way keep the victims legacy a lot you know what i mean because mm -hmm. I, I i i you know i uh so, yeah no, you know, i get it um again i always say like it's a little bit of a sign of intelligence i mean people collecting historical things maybe they came from a crime or maybe there's a human skull but um the historical value is definitely a sign of intelligence i mean in this world that has gone completely mad uh education and knowledge are, are just a dying thing no one wants to know anything and want it done for them so these these kinds of books are phenomenal because you pick it up and it's it's there's some pictures there's some history and 
hopefully people will start like embracing education and knowledge again because yeah. it's literally just slipping away and you're forced <clears throat> if you if you separate it from the digitally digitally looking at a skull or a you know any kind of oddity and then holding it the impetus to learn more about something you're holding mm -hmm. is there than um than if you just saw the image now granted you can google it and find out more about it but it's very fleeting you know what i mean then you're on mm -hmm. to the next you know but um like you say the the maybe there's a, a level of intelligence and atta attached to collecting because they want to keep the knowledge going and they want to keep the keep learning more mm -hmm. you know and they feel this is a, a, a way that they can do it i mean okay. I, I can't tell you well, like I, I, I think these I, i'm i'm plugging your book shamelessly that's the whole idea oh, I, here. I, I, and yeah. basically i, and I appreciate you know, it and <laughs> when, when i i have several children some are adults one is an actual teacher and um we all have a motto of stay off the internet when you want to learn something because oh, you're going to find nonsense and garbage. However, if someone picks up a book like yours, they truly will learn facts because you've done your research and there's a mm -hmm. procedure. A publisher is not going to put out a book that is full of nonsense. Well, maybe, but <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> rare. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> but it's pretty rare. Um, so, again picking up a book and truly reading versus googling it is something completely different two different sides there so no, one I, is right and one is not <laughs> so yeah well I, I appreciate all all the kind words you say to it and you know um i mm. hope others feel that way and you I know, hope so does, too. yeah i mean i i've gained a lot of um i mean that's another reason why i've been able to do these books you know the first book had some dif not difficulty but i would be in people's homes and while i was photographing their collection i would actually see every once in a while they'd be on the phone with another collector and i would overhear them say well this actually only happened once but it's probably happened more and i just did they would say yeah he's here now he's cool don't worry you can let him shoot your collection you know mm -hmm. because that you know they didn't know who i was back then. right the day, you yeah. know and what is this guy gonna do like shoot my collection and say oh you got to see this guy so crazy he has all this stuff mm -hmm. and that was all it was going to be and i was like i'm much more like like i battle all the time with them with the publishers not battle but i insist that we get by that you know that i get to interview the, the owner that they get to have a considerable amount of page you know word count and that every photo needs to have captions because that's that's that you know like you're saying that's what makes it takes it to the second level and my mm -hmm. i can't get too much in the into the caption but it's enough to pique the interest to say oh right really, if you, you know, were to walk into a bookstore i do this all the time if i can find a bookstore yeah i'll spend an hour i'll open the book i'll flip through it if i see a caption that catches my interest i might sit down and browse through that book and probably buy it so right. definitely captions are important so that you can kind of get an idea of what what's in this book so right yeah so i yeah i'm mean, definitely on the say no pun intended same page on that in terms of mm. you know and visuals are, to me are very important you know what Agreed. i mean they, you know it's you know yeah, i truly believe your book could not be a hit as it is is and will continue to be without these pictures because the descriptions and the discussions would be difficult to envision without the photos so yeah and that credit um, goes to all the photographers I mean, yeah, they, yeah they really you know mm -hmm. um one thing i i do I, I get really um i i get a lot of really good photographers to work for me um mm -hmm. some of it has to do with that that i don't know but they've seen the other books and then i get them entrees as photographers you know obviously they're very visual and they and when they when i tell them the project and i'll send them like the, the homeowner will send me or the collector will send me some images of their stuff they're like i, I gotta do this i gotta shoot this you know what i mean because just as mm -hmm. a, you know they're like the oh I'm never gonna, juices are flowing, yeah and yeah. they're like i'm never gonna get into a house like this you know what i mean mm -hmm. i want to do this yeah yeah so. so you know yeah i'll give you a you know i'll do it i, I you know because the budgets are you know not as high as like you know big editorial budget you know magazine or ad budgets, mm -hmm. budgets are smaller but you know they're like you know oh yeah if i'm going to be able to get into this person's house 
I'll, I'll do it. You know, or mm -hmm. get to shoot this collection, I'll, I'll do it. So, um, awesome. and so it, it translates into them putting in the extra effort into getting the, the shot, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and so, it, it'll, it's all, it's very symbiotic, and I'm very appreciative of that. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, and I've always, and I am really just, uh, you know, I, people, I, I try to deflect a lot of the praise or compliments yeah. that come my way because all I really do is I, I'm just able to, just to s curate or seek out and find people that have really things mm -hmm. worth being documented. You okay, know what I mean? well, you, you have to take a little bit of that compliments, those compliments because little. <laughs> you, oh, come on. You are someone that has a vision. Uh, there's a lot of people that don't. You have a vision that you can see to put together like a compilation of these types of things for us to all see. So definitely a special individual to be able to do that because not a lot of us could. Um, I would have never thought to put something like that together. So, all right, so definitely take, I'll take, that. I'll take a little more of the compliments. That, that it was I'll your vision that. that put it all together. So right. And their talent. Yeah, was so it's yeah. definitely a, a combination, and that's mm -hmm. that's a great thing, you know. Um, I used to be a magazine editor, and 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 we would do covers. Um, so many times I would, I would have a cover that I didn't like, or, or I thought I I would show it to people. I, there was something about it, and I didn't really like it. And certain and a disproportionate of staff members say, "I love it, I love it." And I would say, even though I I really don't like it, definitely go with it because. To me, that was great because I'm I'm not here to I'm not here to create a magazine for me, you know right. what I mean. So if there's a, if someone sees something or enough people see something and something that I don't see, mm -hmm. then it's like oh that's great, you know what I mean. Go I never would have done it, you know what I mean. You guys right. are saying it looks great, so let's go with that, you know what I mean. So mm -hmm. I mean, that's you know that that's a a great thing that you know you want to create, you know. You want to have a like you say you want to have a vision but you want to you know you don't want to you don't want to just be satisfying your own creative no it's you know, right you know um kind of got to satisfy what others want to read i mean if it's only for you you're the only one reading your book then yeah <laughs> so. and, and i think i might have used satisfy is the wrong word because it should be that i get it you want you know you you want to uh, entertain is the wrong word to right. you expose. You want to expose right, people it, to it. you know to other right. things. You know, right? Um, um, and I definitely think that the uh, my fan base is the right place. <laughs> I can say uh, I've had I have had a few questions when I was talking to a few people about your upcoming coming on the show, and they were super excited. I did throw out some Amazon links for your book, so I oh, think thanks. that um, you'll see some sales because <laughs> these guys are a little strange. I get show requests about do this spooky thing or this weird thing. So these guys are into. And how do I change. follow? How do I follow when your show is on? I can subscribe. Um, to we follow. are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, okay. uh, YouTube. Um, it's just a single person storytelling. I tell stories. Um, oh, nice. I uh, have multiple college degrees, but my first bachelor's degree was in um, history. So, oh, nice. um, but I kind of twisted a little with the creepy edge to it. <laughs> so recently we just did a show, uh, La Lanchana, which is a Mexican mermaid. And really? a me Mexican celebrity who was obsessed with the mermaid. So check that one out. Wow. That one's out now. Um, just kind of historical, but twisted and fun. And sounds fabulous. Um, yeah, so definitely go check it out. We're everywhere. YouTube is a little slow. Haven't gotten everything up there, but there's four seasons on Spotify. Oh, I will definitely yeah. check it out. And yeah. maybe some inspiration that would reach out to. Yeah, you know, definitely. Connections of, you know, mm -hmm. people I would love to, you know, explore further. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. yeah. I know that. If you ever know. find a mermaid somewhere, like a skeleton, call me. Yeah. <laughs> I want to yeah. see I mean, it. You, you know about the Fiji mermaids, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, we have I'm, the mermaid I'm, parade here too. We just had it, you know, the oh, wow. mermaid parade. So that that's I want to see like the the, the remains, the skeleton of a mermaid. And um yeah. I've spent a lot of time in Hawaii and uh the Hawaiian Menahuni, those they're little elves or something, and I want to see the skeletal remains of one. Wow. I think that'd be interesting to see. So um they're probably not real, but maybe. 
maybe yeah, you know it's you know that that that's always another thing i always found out like is how people how people like i mean the simplest <laughs> would be the wright brothers i mean like people mm -hmm. always thought these guys uh, th that's ridiculous they must literally be insane you know right. what I mean? and there's so many things that people can write off and say no no, that person's just crazy. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And right. They prove, they prove not to be crazy. They prove mm -hmm. to be visionaries, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, I just, I discount nothing. I discount, I discount nothing. I, who am I to know what really exist, existed or, you know? That's where right? I, how I created this, it started out a website and then it became a podcast and it was just all in fun. What if, you know, what if yeah. these things exist? Um, like we we did a show on Amelia Earhart, obviously U.S. history mm -hmm. there, but uh, surprise, surprise, the twisted end is that did she land on a Japanese cannibalistic island? Wow. Yeah, kind of a little twist there. Um, fans yeah. like the cannibalist thing. I don't know why. Well, do you, <laughs> isn't there a Rockefeller? There's a Rockefeller story with cannibals, right? Yeah, haven't gotten yeah. that one yet, but um, yeah. the Jameson whiskey cannibal story we have up there as oh well. wow really i didn't so know Jay, was... jameson whiskey one of the sons was supposedly um involved in cannibalism when he trekked over to another country and, and met with some tribes so yeah you never know yeah. you yeah, never that, know that is the yeah. most popular of tribal collectors is the papua new guinea uh mm -hmm. headhunting tribes mm -hmm. you know those, those pieces yep. go for huge money the shrunken heads are Oh, yeah. front, the shrunken heads are like thirty-five to forty thousand. You know, I'm gonna have to do a show on that, the shrunken heads, because now I, I, I can hook you up. I can, hook, I can yeah. hook you up with some yeah. shrunken head people. That'll oh, okay, that'd be awesome. Work. Yeah, and they'll give you the, you know, from the there's the souvenir ones, and there's the mm -hmm. real tribal ones, and there's the Santa ones, and the, and it's interesting because the ones that aren't ceremonial heads the kids use as toys after a year oh, like wow yeah so th there's a lot of interesting things and the whole interesting thing mm -hmm. about how you make a shrunken head is a lot of people don't realize how it's done it's good mm -hmm. i could hook you up if you want to do a shrunken head yeah thing, yeah yeah let me know i have uh, a, a good guest for you or guest however you want well i have kept you for an hour here almost no you haven't <laughs> kept me i kept you for an hour <laughs> and then, it's been a lot of fun and absolutely blessed to have met you like oh no, and thank you become obsessed no. with your books and your instagram no. and all of that fun stuff and again i'm going to throw that instagram up, gram up here you guys if you're listening head over to youtube and then you can see it so go follow paul gambino right. and um buy his books the newest art of gothic living it's uh, it's it's an amazing book Thank i you. uh i liked it a lot so laying in bed and reading some of the pieces and just kind of eyeballing those pictures looking in those rooms like wow so crazy to see the amazing things that people collect and have in their home so absolutely Okay, well, if there's um, any any time you want to come back on or you have a new book or you just want to come have some fun, let me know. I do have a new come one. I'm, I'm working on one, so uh, I'll let you know about mm -hmm. that. But I don't want to yeah. DM you up on that. But it was great meeting you. So now mm -hmm. I have your contact. I even have your email. Yeah. So now, yes, you so have my phone I'll, number, email, hit me up yeah, anytime. So I will. <laughs> I'll, I'll hit you up on stuff. Just keep you up to date. Mm -hmm. If I find pieces that I think you might be interested in, you know, yeah, for sure. stuff because I come across that stuff. And, you know, mm -hmm. maybe In the meantime, go check out Unexplained Realms. And this I will. Be, this should be up either tonight or tomorrow on YouTube. And Oh, that fast. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so please let audio. me know. So. I'll yeah, the the audio, yeah, the audio will be up on all the audio platforms like Spotify, um, Apple Podcast, iHeart. We're on iHeart. We are on Sirius XM. Really? Um, I think we're in a rotation there, like the five o'clock hour, somewhere like that. So you'll give me uh, all those links that when I post them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll email you. So Yeah, email me all those yeah. links. I'll, I'll make sure it's all there. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah, and thank you, and I'm sorry for all the... Uh... <laughs> no, don't worry. We had, we had technical difficulties. It's okay. Oh, <laughs> it I had happens. a mind difficulty. I don't know. Like, it's this okay. Guy's not worth it. But it's a pleasure. <laughs> thank you very, very, very much. I mean it. All right. I hope we'll you. see you soon, and we'll be in touch. Yes, I hope so. Okay.